Okay, we are recording now, as far as I know, with a good microphone. Hi, uh, my name is Shannon Nicole Kringen, and I'm here in Seattle, Washington, United States. Um, and I just woke up and I don't have any makeup on, I'm not trying to impress anybody with my um, fancy schmancy face. I am here wanting to tap into my wisdom. Uh, I'm having some a certain amount of anxiety and concern about choices that I'm making in my life. And I've always wanted to get beyond the duality ever since I was a little kid and I saw uh, popular kids being mean to each other I got picked on, part of me wanted to be popular, but I wasn't willing to be fake and I wasn't willing to be mean. And I'm seeing a similar pattern. People who think that you have to choose between spirituality or science is if science is just one thing. And I'm gonna try to be careful what I say on this video because I know that certain things are not allowed in the year 2021, you're not allowed to talk about certain scientific things. So let's see if I can talk about the philosophy of what I have without saying anything against the rules and our strict rules. Where people that I admire are being erased from certain websites and I won't name any names. I personally am not on any medications and I'm glad and I'm not here to judge other people that are on medications. If it's helping you, that's good. I personally am happy and proud that I'm not on any medications for mental health or for physical ailments. I improved my diet in terms of eating real protein and real fat that contain vitamins and minerals. I intermittent fast, meaning I eat in a six to eight hour window every day and then I rest from eating the rest of the time. And this has improved my mental and physical health and I'm not making any claims that this is magic I'm just only speaking from a personal Shannon Kringen perspective. I'm not religious. I'm not an atheist, but I'm also not religious. I believe in science and wisdom, but I don't believe in any superstitious religious beliefs, but I also don't believe in superstitious science beliefs. Certain mainstream medical things are not actually good for people. Certain alternative things might also not be good for people. The bottom line is do what's actually healthy, whether it's medicine, nutrition, exercise. I feel like people are so polarized right now thinking that you either have to be a total atheist that believes in science or you have to be a very religious person who is kind of believes in superstition. And I'm neither of those. I believe in the wisdom in the philosophy. Like Joseph Campbell had similar things to say, like he, he actually got harshly criticized. Joseph Campbell, look him up for comparing different religions and ancient philosophies and seeing the wisdom that connected all of them. Like, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Like, I'm not into guilt, shame, fear, um, <clears throat> um, religious ideas that are not helpful, but there's also science that is not helpful. Like, <clears throat> using a lot of chemicals <clears throat> pesticides, synthetic fertilizers. Like I really, instead of talking about what I don't like, 
which could get me into trouble because I'm really angry about certain things happening in the world right now, which I won't talk about specifically. Let me talk about what I do believe in, which is regenerative agriculture. Beyond organic farming, there's something called regenerative agriculture, which is kind of like how we used to farm in the 1800s. We didn't use synthetic fertilizers or pesticides or weird chemicals that could harm nature. We used plant and animal matter to fertilize the earth, earthworms, microbes, fungus, bacteria, uh, V-I-R-U-S, are all over the world. Little tiny microbes are inside of our guts and our bodies, and little tiny microbes are all over the forest floor on the soil, in the soil. So there's a lot of microbes on this planet. And regenerative agriculture farmers work with nature instead of trying to control nature with chemicals and pesticides and genetically modifying organisms which, you know, was a cool idea, just like, you know, building an atom bomb was very clever, but was it wise? No, I don't think it was very wise, but it was very clever. The atom bomb is a clever <clears throat> human invention. Humans are very creative. We invent things. We play around with modifying nature. We think we can outsmart nature. So to me, nature has something to do with spirituality and science science and nature. When you tinker with nature and you mess up the ecosystem, thinking that we're outsmarting the ecosystem, I think that leads us down a dark path. So, okay, I'm talking again about what I don't like. What I do like is regenerative agriculture because it doesn't do that. It doesn't try to control and conquer nature and outsmart nature. It works with nature. There's an amazing farm that I love called, if I had to switch careers, I would probably become a regenerative agriculture worker. I don't want to start my own farm. I don't think I have that in me. I'm not a total entrepreneur in that way, but I would love to work on someone else's farm, like a regenerative agriculture farm, like in Georgia, there's one called, I think it's in Bluffton, Georgia. It's called White Oak Pastures. And they grow both plants and animals, and they have a farm store where they sell um, leather goods and lip balm made out of beef tallow, which is beef fat. So they make products um, that are natural and organic and healthy, not with plastic and chemicals and pesticides and fertilizers, but with natural plant and animal matter. And they turn, they, they kind of almost have a Native American philosophy in terms of respecting the life of the animals that they um, slaughter um, for eating. But they use the entire animal and they appreciate the entire animal. And so they use the leather and the hooves and the bone marrow and the organs. And they make dog treats and cat treats out of uh, meat products that humans don't want to eat. And then um, the rest of the animals are used for fertilizer in the ground. And they, apparently they have some of the best soil around. Like in the 1860s, apparently we had amazing topsoil. And now we don't because we have tinkered with nature so much that we have, sometimes when they say science, don't you believe in science? I love science, but I like, I especially respect science that works with nature and doesn't try to conquer and outsmart nature because that can do harm. See, I'm trying not to say anything that is not allowed here. I really admire regenerative agriculture farmers like White Oak Pastures in Bluffton, Georgia. They work with the soil. They regenerate the soil, which actually really helps. Like if somebody really wants to save the planet, in my opinion, instead of thinking that we need to eat processed fake food grown in a lab, um, I don't want to elaborate on that. 
I eat meat. I'm uh, leaning in the carnivore direction right now. My cat actually is mildly diabetic. And I followed the advice of a naturopathic holistic vet instead of the main, the mainstream vet wanted me to prick my cat's ears, inject him with insulin every day and give him food from a can that has synthetic vitamins in it and is low carb, but not non-carb. Carbohydrates aggravate my cat's diabetes and they put carbohydrates in pet food, not good for cats or dogs. So the naturopathic vet is the only one who told me, yes, you're doing the right thing. I switched my cat to a raw meat diet. It's nutritionally balanced for all life stages. I get it at the special pet food store for cats and dogs. And it is raw meat. And I handle it very carefully. I keep it refrigerated and I it's frozen. And then I thaw it a little bit at a time. So I feed it to him in a very careful way that's healthy for him. And he gets several small meals a day and he's mildly diabetic and I don't have to prick his ear every day, which he hated. And he found painful to prick a cat's ear every day, a few times a day is some cats can tolerate it. My cat is not one of these cats. He's very sensitive and I'm very sensitive. And so I got insulin for him and gave it to him a couple of times, but you have to give a cat such a small amount of insulin. So to make a long story short, I know humans who have not needed to take insulin because they worked with their doctor on nutrition and exercise, and they managed to wean themselves off of having to take insulin. If somebody is happy taking insulin, hey, it's none of my business, but I'm happier feeding my cat and his food is a bit expensive but I feed him a raw meat diet with no carbohydrates added to it. And he's getting the nutrition that he needs. And he used to be a little bit too thin. Diabetic cats tend to be kind of overweight or kind of underweight. My cat was a little bit underweight and he gained weight since I switched him to a raw meat diet. He gets freeze dried, raw, crunchy. Um, His treats are dry, freeze dried, raw, um, meat that's freeze dried and crunchy. And I sprinkle that on top of his wet food, which is raw meat frozen. And then I thaw out a little bit at a time. So I continuously have frozen food in the freezer for my cat. And then I thaw it a little bit at a time to keep it fresh. And that's how I feed my cat. And it is labor intensive, but I would rather do that than have to take him to the vet. They wanted to do blood curve test on his blood sugar, which requires that you drop your, and now you have to just do curbside pickup and drop off of your pet. And my cat is very stressed at the vet. So my cat's life is so much happier now. I don't need to take him to the vet very often at all. In fact, I haven't needed to take him to the vet for the last two years because he's done so well. So I'm just using that as an example of how powerful the scientific wisdom in nutrition is. In my opinion, I'm going with nature by feeding my cat raw meat, which is similar to what he would eat if he was out hunting in the wild. So I eat in a certain way. I eat mostly protein and fat and in the form of meat and dairy and fruits and vegetables and nuts. And I eat sort of like 1800s style. Like I don't eat a lot of sugar and processed foods and vegetable oils and stuff like that. So I eat in a healthy way. So when they say believe in science, yeah, I believe in science and science that has wisdom in it. That's working with nature, not science that is trying to fight nature and conquer nature. So I'm trying to figure out how to navigate my life and try to figure out how to maintain my humanity because certain things happening right now, I think are causing us to not trust ourselves, to think that we have to listen to other people telling us what to do and what to think and how to act. And if we don't, that we're, we're told that we're very selfish. If we don't go along with what certain authority figures are telling us, whether it's true or not, I'm not here to specifically say, see, I'm trying to not say anything that would get me in any trouble. 
I believe in eating healthy and exercising. What I love is regenerative agriculture. I love feeding my cat a no carb diet because he's a carnivore. He's a cat. He doesn't need carbs. They put wheat gluten and potato starch in cat food, which gives some cats, it helps some cats develop obesity and diabetes and like other health problems. And if you feed a cat nutritionally balanced for all life stages, raw meat, or they also have canned food that's not raw, that it's cooked meat, but it's 98% meat. I don't know what the 2% is, but it's almost entirely carnivore, which is good for cats. And so I'm just using that as an example. I love music and art and freedom of thought. I love, I also have an issue. I have a car uh, a 2008 smart car that has 99,000 miles on it. And I think it needs a tune up. And I'm listening to too many people that are telling me that my car is bad and I should get rid of it. And I was going to look at this other car, which is a Scion, a 2006 Scion, which is basically a Toyota because Toyotas can last two or 300,000 miles if you take good care of them. So I'm all stressed out about what to do about my car because my car works just fine, except the fan doesn't blow anymore inside the, the cabin. Uh, and I may or may not have that fixed because the mechanic told me that it's not a physical safety hazard. It's only a cosmetic comfort. You know, it's not as comfortable for me because the fan doesn't blow. The heater still works and the defroster still works, but the fan doesn't blow air in my cabin. So I have to roll down the window. I also have old fashioned roll windows. So I don't know if I really want to look at another car right now. And then I could go to a dealer or I could, and some people say, buy <clears throat> from a private party and then have a mechanic, pay to have a mechanic scope out the car. Because you can't always trust what Carfax says, apparently. Scotty Kilmer, a mechanic I admire online, says, watch out because sometimes the Carfax information isn't accurate. Whether it's intentionally not accurate or not, I don't know, but you can't always trust what it says on the Carfax apparently. And you used to be able to trust it, he says. And he doesn't know why everyone's just too much in a rush now to really check and make sure that they've got it correct. People are obsessed right now with fact checking. Well, I, I, I care about things being truthful. And I think that you need to be careful to not label and stereotype people as true or false. But I'm not going to say any specifics because, again, I don't want to break any rules here. But I am very angry about certain injustices that I think are happening. So I'm trying to figure out what's the best thing to do with my car situation and what's the best thing to... Because I think of a car not as an investment. A car is... I'm very utilitarian if that's how you say that word. I got my car used and it's like when you buy a car, whether you're paying monthly or buying it outright, you're renting a car. Every car is a rented car because cars don't last forever. And I didn't buy my car for the resale value. I bought my car so that I could drive it for its whole lifespan till death do us part. So I'm going to drive my car probably until it completely wears out. Like if they tell me I need a new engine, how much is that going to cost? And then I have to say, well, would I rather just get a different car or keep renting this car? Because, you know, all cars are rented cars because it's temporary. No car lasts forever. And I, I didn't buy it so that I could sell it and make a profit. I bought it so that I could have a car to drive to get me around. So I don't understand people who are obsessed with cosmetic perfection of their fancy car. And I, I don't care about any of that. And so all I care about is that my car runs and gets good gas mileage. So I drive a teeny, 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 tiny little smart car. And I drove it on the freeway several times. I drive it on the freeway almost every day. I've gone to Portland three times from Seattle, which is like a three hour trip each way. Uh, and it was fine. And so it gets like almost 40 miles to the gallon. I haven't tested it, but to, to verify that it really gets 40 miles to the gallon, but it gets somewhere around 40 miles to the gallon, give or take, well, probably a few, a few miles less than that, depending on if it's the freeway or the, the residential streets around the city. 
So I've had some boundary issues with people who have different opinions. Some people say go to a dealer. Some people say uh, buy from a private party. Um, different people have different opinions about what I should and shouldn't do. And I need to say, okay, well, that's great. But what do I think? I love my car. And so I don't resent having to invest a certain amount of money to maintain my car to get the longevity that I want. I mean, I've, I've looked on the smart car forums and some people drive their smart cars for 200,000 miles. It's unusual, but if somebody really loves their smart car and is willing to maintain it every 10,000 miles, get it like a whole checkup and, you know, get it all lubed up and cleaned and tuned up or whatever they call it. Um, I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my car as long as possible, like until they tell me I need a new engine. And then I might say, well, it might be better to get a different used car than to get a whole new engine. Um, but part of me wants to go to a dealership and find the oldest used car that they have so that it's less expensive and some kind of warranty. Because now there are dealerships that give you warranties even on used cars, which is great. I love having a car. I didn't have a car. I didn't, I I'm 52 years old right now. I waited till my forties to get my car, my first car. So my, my smart car is my first car. I got it in 2012 and it's now 2021. So that's nine years. And I love my car. I got, it had 24,000 miles on it and now it has 99,000 miles on it and it still works great. It's got some cosmetic damage and the fan doesn't blow. But other than that, it works fine. When I put it in reverse, it, it kind of goes, it kind of, it does a weird thing when I put it in reverse, but it does do reverse. So I try to avoid having to use reverse because it stresses me out when it makes that sound because it's a clutch actuator, um, which it's a weird transmission system. So I'm cautious about that. So, and I have one headlight that goes out and needs to get replaced like once or twice a year. And they don't know why they said they don't see any leaks. So they don't know why it does that. So that's really annoying, but I love my car. Other than that, it's very tiny and easy to, to fit into parking spaces. And it's made in France. It's a German car. Smart cars is, is connected to Mercedes Benz. So it's very expensive to repair my car and I can only go to certain mechanics. Um, if I, knew then what I know now, I would have gotten probably a, a, a Honda or a Toyota or a Scion or something easier to repair, easier to find mechanics that can work on cars that are easy to find parts for and less expensive parts. The parts on my car are high quality, but mechanics need to have special tools to work on my kind of car, a smart car. So my car was made in France, even though it's a German car. I only know this because I looked inside my car and I read the label and it said made in France. It's like, okay, some smart cars are made in France and some are made in Germany, I guess. I don't know, but um, I love my car. So the point of this video is to say Shannon Kringen wants to find her wisdom and her personal power. There's a new Edie Brickell song called My Power. I love it. Thank you, Edie Brickell, for being a authentic I see her as an authentic person. I see Edie Brickell as somebody as part of my tribe. Something about her reminds me of myself in a good way, makes me feel less lonely. Tori Amos, Tom Petty, Edie Brickell, those are the three musicians right now that are helping me the most feel less lonely. Uh, because friends and family feel very differently than me about certain things in the world right now. And I'm feeling a bit lonely and, and alienated in that way. I'm trying to figure out how to build bridges and connect with people. So I want to find my inner wisdom. So I just wanted to do a video for today. It is now February 17th, 2021. So I'm going to figure out how to stay as human and healthy as possible in the way that I know how, which is full of wisdom and scientific wisdom that works with nature and doesn't try to fight and conquer and control nature. Uh, and that's also in alignment with my spirituality because I'm very much into nature. I'm not into religious dogma of any kind, but I'm also not an atheist. It's weird that people think you either have to be religious or an atheist. I'm neither. I'm not an atheist, but I'm also not religious. I'm spiritual and scientific. 
but I work with nature. I use non-toxic unscented soap. I do not use harsh chemicals in my house. That's bad for my health. Um, I eat as natural and organic as possible. Real meat and fruits and vegetables and nuts is as little processed food as possible. Every once in a while, I have some ice cream, which I know isn't even good for me, but whatever, I enjoy ice cream. Uh, I try to get like you know, natural ice cream, not with a bunch of fake artificial flavors and colors, but like milk, eggs, cream, regular natural fat, whole fat. So fat has been demonized in the nutrition culture, but um, never mind about that. I just eat like I'm in the 1800s as much as I can, which is before we invented all of the weird things that we're tinkering with now. But humans are creative. So I just wanted to share that this is how I feel as of today. So this is Shannon Kringen, my website, shannonkringen.com. A bunch of my art and creative stuff is linked there. I'm a multimedia artist and a free thinker and a free range human being. So thanks for listening. Bye for now. I hope you got something out of this video. I feel better after expressing. <laughs>